I'm Sherry, I'm a compulsive overeater and I weigh measure three meals a day off the gray sheet. I don't eat in between no matter what, it's the most important thing in my life. And I wanna thank Vita for asking me to speak. This is my first time on this meeting. Um, I have a long story. I came into the rooms at 21, I'm six. I'm gonna be 65 this year. So 44 years. And um, when I came in, I was 175 pounds, which is like six, 70 more than I am now. And I just thought it was about losing weight. I had been to Weight Watchers. I had binged in college, binged in Europe. I went on semester abroad to London and binged in Europe thinking that if I saw statues painting, I don't know, I was looking for something more exciting than food and I never found it. Then I um, was binging on Weight Watcher treats. And then I came to my first OA meeting in New York City and I binged on the way to the meeting because I was never going to eat again. And Anyway, I got a sponsor. I put down the food. It was kind of like gray sheet, modified gray sheet. And she said to go to AA meetings and OA meetings because there wasn't much um, OA back then. So I, you know, I brought my lunch to work and I took my Tupperware. I went to AA meetings and I was like, wow, this is interesting and very exciting, like hearing these stories. But I kind of thought this is not something I want to do forever. This is just something I'm going to do now. And when I lost the weight, I was happy for like a minute. And then it's like, oh my God, I have feelings, I have fears, I have anxiety, I have anger, I have self-pity. I just had all, I had no tools for living. Uh, growing up, I have immigrant parents and I had scoliosis, which is spinal curvature, and they wouldn't do anything to correct it. And it was getting worse and worse and worse until the gym teacher at 16 told me to have the surgery. So I had the surgery but they only corrected at like 50%. And I was just so angry at my parents, so angry. Everybody else seemed to be beautiful and thin and have straight backs. And I just felt like a freak of nature. Uh, so at the end of the year of abstinence, I picked up the food. I think I did try. I mean, I made phone calls. I went to therapy. I did try to fight the food, but I ultimately just gave up and just picked up that bite. And I thought it was going to be a weekend and it was a year of eating like just like as if nothing had changed. And I moved into the city thinking, oh, now they call geographic is when you go to London to stop eating or go to Europe or move into the city. I thought moving into the city would be, oh, meetings around the corner. Well, I just ate around the clock anyway. Um, so it really doesn't have to do with location, it has to do with your heart, you know, are you surrendered? Anyway, so I ate for a year. Then when I tried to, you know, the first time is a gift. The second time I was like, oh my God, I couldn't believe how hard it was to get abstinent. It was day one, day one, going to meetings, eating before, eating after. I literally would binge on, a, you know, some vendor on the street, get to the meeting and I was doubled over in pain. I couldn't even sit in the chair. I was like in a fetal position on the floor. Then I'd get abstinent. And then at this time, gray sheet had come about. It was separate from OA. And I was like, my sponsor said, we're not going to do it. We're just going to visit the rooms and do it with exception because we didn't want to measure in public. That was the big thing with gray sheet. I didn't want to measure in public. So I did it like for two years. I measured at home and not out, but I didn't go out that often. And it worked. And then, but it was very circumstantial. Like if I felt you know, if I was going to the gym and felt pretty and had a boyfriend and the job, everything was going out, out going well on the, on the outer outsides. I was, I was absent, but the second there was any problems, lost the relationship, lost the job, whatever I was eating. But this time I was 32 and I started binging and I couldn't stop and I didn't want to do gray sheet. Um, so I went to rehab because my insurance covered it. And I never want to forget what rehab was like. It was 28 days. I was living with a woman who was like obese and she snored. I literally had to go on the couch and the, and also the food wasn't gray sheet food. It was like foods we avoid in moderation. So if you can imagine having like slivers of whatever, I was like, the second I got out of rehab, I binged on. So this was my new thing. I didn't want to blow up and gain 50 pounds again, as I had done many times. So I, um, started to binge on dietetic products, diet Coke, diet gum, diet frozen stuff, diet candies. And I was able to just be only 10 pounds overweight at this point using dietetic products, but the insanity was the same. 
And one day, it's like every day I would switch food plans from Gracie to OA because Gracie was, you know, without exception, no carbs. And then I'd say, no, I want a carb. So I'd literally change sponsors, change food plans in a minute, like in a nanosecond. And one day I was going to do that again. And I decided to call somebody with time. And this was a woman who saw me doubled over in pain in a fetal position at a meeting. And she said, Cherry, I've seen you struggling for years. Just give up. And I did. It was, it was a magic. And this is why I always tell my sponsees, I want to hear from you before you eat. Like, don't call me afterwards to tell me you binged. Call me before so we could stop it. So that phone call saved my life. I stayed on the phone with her. I did not throw out my gray sheep lunch. I went to an AA meeting with my gray sheep food. That's five minutes, Sherry. You've got another 10 left. Okay. So I've been absent ever since that day, which is February 17th, 28 years ago. And uh, I knew I had to do things differently. It wasn't just about doing gray sheet. I had to change because um, my sponsors were like, you're not, you're not changing. Like the old Sherry will eat again. So I did, you know, go to AA. There were no phone bridge, no Zoom, nothing. It was like, oh, you know, just a desert. <laughs> if you didn't go to AA, you were dead. It was pretty much like that. So I went to two AA meetings a day because I lived in New Jersey at this point. I was married. So I went to AA in New Jersey, AA in the city near my office. I made 30 calls a day, no exaggeration, because every minute I wanted to eat in the first couple of months, it was like, you know, go to the bus, to the, the job, like make a phone call. You're on the corner, make a phone call. You're at the elevator, make a phone call. You're at your desk. Because I would been in the past, I binged on the bus, you know, on the elevator. on the. So at, anytime I was going to binge, I was calling. And um, I stopped going to Double D, you know, the coffee shop. I stopped going to, you know, everything was at home. Like I, I made coffee at home, whatever, because I didn't want any temptation. And it worked. But after 30 days, I saw, you know, that was not just phone calls and meetings was not going to do it. I had to go through the steps. Now, I had dabbled in the steps before. I'd done four steps and nine steps. And it worked. But when the food isn't solidly down, like when I was doing step work and being in and out of the food, it wasn't working. Like you really have to get step one down. You know, I, I look back on all my years and I think the only thing I didn't want to do was stop eating. I would do four steps. I would do nine steps. I would make them, I would lead me, I would do anything but not eat. Like, just don't ask me. I would read the big book with stains on the book. Just don't ask me to stop eating. So if you don't do step, if I don't do step one, there's no recovery. I have to put the food down. That's step like zero. So once the food was solidly down in gray sheet, I was a, I met this woman who became my big book sponsor and she laid it on the line. She said, your problem is not food. That's a symptom. Your real problem is selfishness, dishonesty, resentment, and fear. So we went through the steps out of the big book. She had me read the first 63 pages, highlight the words recover and recovery. And then we met for an hour. Now I do it on the phone with people, but we met and she explained step one, can you have one X and not have more? I said, no, I can't. So that's, and that applies for me with Diet Coke and gum or whatever. Can, uh, do you believe you're insane and can be restored to sanity? Yes, because I saw people get better. Step three, are you willing to turn your will in your life, which is your thinking and your actions over to God? So that means when I was having food thoughts or bad thoughts of any kind, I was willing to like pick up the phone and pray and not do, not do it basically. Change my thinking, change my actions. So I was willing to do that. And then, but that's it. We were right into step four. You know, people talk about, oh, you need a year to do a four step. You need that. It's not true. In the in the old days with in AA, they were doing four steps. You know, once they were sober five days, they were getting into the, they didn't have the luxury of time. If they waited a year to start doing inventory, making amends and helping others, they'd be dead. So I did my four step. I wrote for like 20 minutes or half hour a day. When I finished it in a month, I read it to her. I was filled with it. Hated my parents because they didn't take me to the doctor. Hated everybody that had straight backs, good parents. Hate. I just had so much hate in my heart, so much resentment, which is the number one offender. And it was covered up by food, you know? And I had so much fear of everything. Um, and self-pity, selfishness, you know, it was all about me, my food, my body, my weight, my... And dishonesty, for sure. I mean, I was always lying about food and cheating my employer. I was like going, you know, to get food instead of working, whatever. So I wrote it all down. I read it to her. I made a list of amends I owed. I mean, ex-roommates that I 
binged all that, you know, took their food, never replaced it. Boyfriends canceled plans because I was binging jobs where I, you know, I wasn't honest because I was busy, you know, in the cafeteria or whatever. I just made a list and I did it. And I was afraid of doing it, but I was more afraid of relapse. So for me, I have to be more afraid of this disease than of anything I have to do in my life. Um, so anyway, once I did all the steps, she said, okay, now you're going to live in 10, 11, and 12, which is daily inventory. So it's a mini A thing. minute, Sherry, you have five minutes left. Okay. So every day I do a 10 step. Where was I selfish, dishonest, resentful, afraid for this day? It takes about five minutes. It's the same crap. Hate my mother. Hate this. Hate that. Hate getting older. Blah, blah, blah. Um, ask God to remove it. Meditation, you know, prayer. I'm in a Bible study. I read the Bible. It's all about, you know, our disease is willfulness, rebelliousness. For me, it's dishonest. You know, it's, it's the character defects, seven deadly sins, sloth. Oh my God. I had to like get up off the couch to get something. It was like, I had to pray to get off the couch. I can be so lazy. And this morning I didn't feel like going to the supermarket. I felt so lazy. Don't ask me to go to the supermarket. I said, sure, you have to go to the supermarket. You, you will lose your absence if you don't get your absent food. Like you cannot, I can't play with this disease. So I went to the supermarket. I went to, I, I exercise every day. That is like an antidepressant and a mind body thing for me that I do for myself meetings. Um, I've had no serious, no matter what. So I had cancer in um, 2005. I was able to stay absent because I was helping others. Like when I'm in a, you know, they say like Bill Wilson was out of work for two years. He ran to a hospital to help somebody. When I'm having a bad day, I'm trying to help somebody else because that's the only thing that gets me out of self-pity. Gratitude lists. Um, and then three years ago, I fell on ice and broke my back. So my curvature, my spinal curvature is even worse now than it was when I, before. So I'm, I was really messed up from that. Um, I thank the gray sheeters, including Theta that came to my house and made my meals. I couldn't walk. Um, but it's been really hard because I had permanent damage, you know, more curvature now. And it's like, I just don't, I lost an inch of height. And like I said, one of my defects is the vanity. I don't like being five one. I want to be taller. I don't like being older. But I cannot eat over my age. I cannot eat over my back. I cannot eat over anything. I cannot eat, period, no matter what, because my whole life will just blow up in smoke. My marriage, I have a daughter who's 27 that's never seen me in the food. My job, I might, you know, like in AA, they say, if you want to drink, you might as well put the keys to your house, your car. You might as well just put it all on the table because you're never going to see it again. And it's so true. Like we take for granted, we drive, we have homes, we have supermarket, I have money for, you know, when I was binging, I was spending tons of money on binge food. So I, can't, I, I don't have another recovery in me. I know it. It's, it's a miracle that I have 28 years, but I do have another relapse in me if I don't work this program. So it's whatever I have to do. And sometimes, you know, sometimes I'm really busy. I mean, most of these 28 years I've been busy with work, with my daughter, with, I have a life because I'm absent. But there are days where work is slow or nothing's going on. And I just, I have to clean or read a book or watch TV or whatever. I have to get to the next meal. I literally binge watch Suits on Netflix. Like there were, must've been 200 episodes just to get from meal to meal uh, recently, whatever. It's like, there's no law that says you can't watch TV and but you can sleep in between meals, but you cannot eat. But if you want quality of life, obviously you need to do laundry and do other things. And I'm so grateful. There are other programs like clutters and um, self-sabotagers. You know, there's other, I found out that I had more problems with food than food when I got absent. I thought, oh, it's not just the, the food I have, you know, avoidance. I don't want to do stuff. I procrastinate, you know, but thanks to this program and God, I did my taxes. I did my laundry. I called the repairman. You know, I do because if you can't eat, well, there's nothing else to do, but do, you know, do stuff. Um, you know, I was raised by very frugal, miserly parents. Don't give away anything. Don't throw away anything. But I'm putting together a donation bag of books, clothes. You know, I just have to do the next right thing, whatever that is. Um, so anyway, I hope I've helped someone. Uh, just know that everybody starts on day one. You know, we don't graduate. There's no graduation. And there's no skipping day one. Um, so if you're on day one, 
you know, if you have to binge on phone calls all day to get from meal to meal, it's okay. It's going to the, uh, the uh, physical allergy will leave you once the sugar and carbs are out of your system. And then you'll, then you'll have to work on the spiritual when the steps are there. And I'm available to sponsor anyone with the big book. And I'm happy to take calls. I'll put my number in the chat. And thank you all for helping me stay absent today.